This is my 19th day of using the Google Pixel 7 in time sure do fly. Today I'm going to be turning off 5G to see how it impact battery life. If you're new here, I'm going to walk you through a day in the life of using the Google Pixel 7. It is a random Wednesday for me. So woke up at 7.35, day 19, 8 o'clock, finally left the house. Sun is out and shining. Today I decided to turn off 5G. I honestly haven't really noticed too much of a difference between 5G and LTE, to be honest. I still don't think it's super widely available. Just more of a marketing thing. Maybe you live in the city, you can take advantage of all the spectrum. But to me, the difference between 5G and LTE is similar to 90 hertz and 120 hertz. That's a hot take for you right there made my way over to the water tower on my early morning walk play around with the photosphere feature still don't find it useful but if this is your thing here's some footage of me scrolling around capturing this giant water tower i also played around with the vertical panoramic mode as well probably can't tell the difference but the photo came up looking great it actually seems kind of futuristic and looks better than the real life figure here's some footage of my early morning walk at 9:41. AM my phone is at 68% so two hours after turning off 5G still taking a pretty big hit this is when I'm walking around using data so it doesn't seem like it made too much of an impact early in the morning at around 10:29, made my way to the dentist because one of my tooth was killing me had to go check it out was informed that I'm gonna need a root canal so that should be fun at noon had some winter melon and pork soup then went for my afternoon walk 12:42. phone is at 42 percent using my go-to camera today to try and preserve battery life on the pixel 7. i guess most people don't really go about vlogging every single day so i try to reduce the camera usage see how that goes here is this nice little waterfall thing that's been here for a while but now they're slapping big ugly fence over it maybe someone tried to climb it or something but this is why we can't have nice things now it is obstructing my great view time is 1 30 we are at 37 percent at around one o'clock my phone is at 30 percent so after my early morning walk i'm back at my desk working most of the day so barely using my phone 21% battery left. It is 3 p.m. on a work day. At 2.10, my phone is at 30%. Here's me washing the dishes and watching YouTube after dinner. And for dinner, I had scallops and fried rice. Time of death, 5.41 p.m. for my Google Pixel 7. So for today, my screen on time is four and a half hours which is pretty accurate but i'll keep checking it every now and then to see if it changes out of curiosity i did a speed test for my lte getting like 100 megabytes per second nothing life-changing but it doesn't seem to be saving that much battery so i did turn on 5g again for my next few days graham made a great point in the comments that I do use my camera a lot in the morning so on day 24 I'll try to reduce the usage and only take photos or videos when necessary I know most people don't go out every morning vlogging taking photos and videos so I'll try to simulate a more normal experience I do have other cameras so I can always use those as well to document the journey so anytime someone asks if they just switch from the iPhone to a latest Galaxy S series or Pixels, there's a lot of things that need to be considered. But one thing it is interesting to see, now Google is stepping up their marketing game and pushing the Pixel series more. It is getting more attention from Apple users and other users in general. But before you think about switching to a Pixel phone, which makes sense. In the US, a lot of people are stuck in the Apple ecosystem, but at the same time, people are using Google every day. They have a Gmail account. Google Maps is more superior than Apple Maps, even though Apple Maps may look better. People use YouTube and Google every day. You can literally Google anything and find the answers to it if you do it correctly. But anytime somebody want to switch from an iPhone to an Android phone, it is not that simple and there are many layers to consider. 
you have to ask yourself if you have used Android phones in the past. If you did, then you have a sense of what you're getting yourself into. But if you haven't, you would need to make a commitment to learn and make the switch. There are going to be some pain points if you're stuck in the old iPhone ways. If you get frustrated easily and don't like to learn new things or experiment, look around, play around with features. It may be best to end the conversation here and I would not recommend the Pixel if you are using even in an older iPhone. Ecosystem is a big factor in the Apple world. A lot of people in the US are lazy and they just use the default SMS texting or iMessage. I know overseas like in the UK people are more willing to use WhatsApp and other platforms so that everyone can communicate more smoothly. This problem can be easily resolved if Apple switched to RCS then all the messages can talk to each other nicely but Apple is not willing to do that. They purposely make everything look better on the iPhone so when you are talking with Android users the experience is less optimal. If you have always had an iPhone and you recently switched to an Android phone, people on the iPhone side will know that you are the green bubble person. When you try setting videos in group chat it will look pixelated and ugly. If you're willing to live with all the ridicule and mockery and ready to be different, separate yourself from the herd, especially in the US. It is more challenging because half the people here are iPhone users. So a lot of things to consider. But before switching ecosystem, you also need to consider if you already have an Apple Watch. If you do, you may need to sell it or find another home for it because it wouldn't work with your Android device. AirPods connect seamlessly with the iPhone and Macs, so the whole experience is easy and they all talk to each other really well. Once you take out a piece of the whole ecosystem like the iPhone, there will obviously be a disruption in your life. So just another thing you will need to consider since the Pixel will not talk with all of the devices like the same way an iPhone would. I actually grew up not liking the iPhone just because of the closed ecosystem, this little implementation of features. But throughout the years I learned to appreciate their brilliance and even though I don't agree with all the tactics, I can see why people do like iPhones and I see why people like Android phones. I personally prefer Android for the freedom and openness. Everything's easier to customize, although Apple have improved a lot throughout the years. At the end of the day, you're not really gonna change people's minds if they already made it up. There are some things in life that I learned to not argue with. Apple versus Android, politics, vaccine, religion, gun control. Everyone is entitled to their own opinions, but I try to understand both sides. So a lot of the time the answers are not always black and white. I've used iPhone before and I have nothing against them but I just personally prefer the Android side of the house. Once you go through all of the above assessments and determine that you're willing to take the step to the bright side then I think it is a no-brainer in this scenario. Getting the latest Google flagship versus a three-year-old iPhone. You're getting a 6.3 inch phone versus six inches. Getting a better and brighter screen with higher refresh rate, more RAMs, higher storage capacity. 64 gigs is tough by today's standards with all the apps and photo qualities getting bigger. There are pros and cons to every phone. There have been a lot of people asking me about overheating issues with the Pixel 7. I personally haven't experienced that, but if enough people are asking about it, it may be potentially be an issue that is out there. Battery life depend on usage. On light days, I get eight hours. On work days, I get 12 hours. So it all depends on your lifestyle and see how it works for you. Build quality is not the best, but I don't think it would hinder any of the performances on the Pixel series. The dust picking up is annoying on the camera bar and also the speaker area, but I think it'll be fine. So day 19 started with me doing my early morning walk at 7.40. By 5.40, phone was dead at that point. 10 hours seems about average, maybe a little bit light on a weekday even though I turn off 5G. I usually get about 12 hours on a weekday. I did use some GPS in the morning and had music playing through Bluetooth as I was making my way to the dentist. But like I said, I tried to use the camera less in the morning going forward and see how that impact battery life. Let me know if there are any other scenarios you want me to simulate. If you haven't already, please check out day 18 where I play around with the photosphere feature more. Please like and subscribe and see you guys in the next video.